Hi everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to check the flagship headphones of FIO, the FT7 that sell for 699 in the US and 749 euros here locally. And knowing how good their FT5 were about one year ago, starting with the build quality, accessories included and finishing with the sound quality, my expectation levels regarding the FT7 were quite high and I must say they didn't disappoint. I actually tried these about one month ago at the Hein show in Munich, but I wanted to know how they sound with my setup and that's what we're going to discuss today. However, before checking them out, let's unbox them first. I had a deja vu moment with the FT7 as the unboxing experience is quite similar to that of the FT3 and FT5 headphones. First of all, we have this great looking carry case that will nicely protect them when traveling. This is a rigid and high quality case. It wasn't a surprise to get a nice detachable cable that lacks microphonics. It uses 3.5 mm jacks on the headphone end and is terminated with a 4.4 mm balanced pentacon connector. They offer a quarter inch adapter and a four pin XLR adapter, so you can use them with portable or desktop devices. This is not your regular stock cable that you'll never want to use. It could be the last cable you'll ever use actually. Theo used high purity monocrystalline copper conductors that were cryo treated at minus 192 degrees Celsius for seven days which tightened the crystal's boundaries, improving electrical conductivity. It's a stiff, thick and three meter long cable, so clearly Theo designed them mostly for home listening. You can drive them with portable devices as well, but you'll need to buy a shorter cable. Such a third party cable usually costs a pretty penny and I'm happy seeing it bundled with the FT7. Two pairs of ear pods were also included, one pair made out of lambskin and the other from a breathable fabric, which will sound quite different, but more about that in a minute. Build quality wise, I was not surprised by how well everything was put together, knowing how great their FT5 felt in my hands one year ago. This is a lightweight frame that is made mostly out of carbon fiber. We also have carbon fiber at the ear caps. These are also wooden ear cap covers. We have a few aluminum and plastic parts and also leather strap right here. But overall, I'd say that this is a high quality build. At 427 grams, these are also considered lightweight headphones by Planar Mafia standards. And the most important part is that I can wear this for three hours a day straight without a problem. They don't apply lots of pressure on top of my head or around my ears. So I believe that the most important test was already passed with uh, flying colors. The only things that might bother you is that these don't swivel a lot, so you cannot put them flat on your table. And secondly, adjusting them on your head, you need to apply a slightly higher pressure than usual. But once you, you know, adjust them according to your head size, you don't need to touch this part again, so no big deal. The ear caps are now much bigger compared to the FT3 and slightly bigger compared to the FT5 uh, since we have bigger drivers inside. And again, we have these angled headphone connectors that are not shooting into your shoulders. So uh, yeah, I believe for this price, the build quality seems fantastic. If you are wondering what technology has been used in the FT7, these are open back planar magnetic headphones that are using some of the biggest drivers I've seen in any headphones at 106 millimeters in diameter. This is really a big driver. These also use some of the thinnest drivers you'll see in any headphones at one micron. Uh, these are on the same level with Havamansu Susvara and Havamansu Susvara Unveiled, and I'm pretty sure these will sound quite fast. In the usual fashion, we have a double-sided magnet structure, uh, exactly like they did on FT5, except that right now we have nine magnets per side, so 18 magnets per ear cap, and also their magnets have been rounded, that creates a uniform magnetic field. These are also the strongest neodymium magnets in existence, dubbed N52, each having a magnetic flux of 1.5 Tesla. 
Last but not least, we have an impedance of 25 ohms and a sensitivity of 94 dB per one single milliwatt of power. So uh, these are not that uh, easy to drive in reality. Uh, these will like a slightly higher current intake coming from your amplifier. Uh, these will work just fine with uh, portable devices, with dongles, with uh, portable digital audio players, but they will definitely sound better out of a dedicated headphone amplifier. And finally, let's hit some eardrums and let's check this out. Sound-wise, there are some things that FT7 are doing a lot better compared to their FT3 and also FT5 headphones. Uh, even versus competing headphones like Hyphaman Anado Nano, like Edition XS, uh, Moondrop Venus, even compared to some pricier headphones, which I'll mention in a second. And there is one thing that slightly bothers me on the FT7, but you can mitigate that by using these fabric ear pads or a sweeter sounding DACAM combo like the K17, for example. I tried this about one month ago, as I told you before, at the Munich High End show, and even in that noisy environment, uh, it was very clear to me that these sound so much bigger and so much open and so much deeper compared to the FT3 and FT5 headphones. And after doing some A-B comparison with a lot of headphones that I have on my headphone wall, it was clear to me that these are so much closer to HD 100 in terms of overall separation, uh, sound stage and depth. And if you are not listening to a lot of live recordings or some big orchestral work, then the difference in sound stage becomes so much smaller. Also, tonality is quite similar, but not exactly the same with HD 100S. Uh, these have a nicer, a tighter, and a punchier bass line compared to HD800S. And also, uh, these have a slightly more energy, uh, a little bit more sharpness in the upper treble as well. The Hyphaman HE1000 unveiled are currently my favorite headphones below 3 kilo bucks. Uh, these are so open sounding, so transparent, so detailed, and so comfortable to be used long term that all of my videos are being edited with HE1000 unveiled on my head. And after doing some long A-B comparisons with the FT7, again, I was surprised by how close the FT7 is in terms of technical performance with the HE1000 unveiled. Resolution, uh, transit response, soundstage depth, openness, it's so, so much closer to the HE1000 unveiled. Uh, these are, of course, not exactly on the same level, uh, but the FT7 don't feel like uh, considerably cheaper headphones. It could be even the other way around if we check only their build quality. I mean, let's be serious, Hyphaman never shown when it came to build quality. Tonality-wise, I'm happy to report that the basses are right now uh, stronger compared to the FT3 and FT5 headphones, even if the measured performance is quite similar in that regard. Uh, if I use them with uh, portable devices like their M21 a portable digital audio player, then the basses are quite uh, fast and punchy, but if I put them on a serious a desktop a headphone amplifier like uh, Felix Envy Performance Edition, like uh, Kain Soul 170 HA, then the space is, becomes more layered of a higher quality, even stronger, and I have longer decays when needed. Uh, so I believe that these are higher performing drivers. These will scale much higher with a nicer amplifier compared to their FT3 and FT5 headphones. So you'll need to spend also on a really nice DAC and headphone amplifier if you want to squeeze uh, maximum performance out of uh, FT7. If you want my recommendation, I would go with their K17, which works absolutely amazing with FT7. That is a really nice DAC and combo also with a streamer inside. So you don't need to spend a fortune to get a nice sound with this. Uh, they played well with uh, USB dongles uh, too. I had plenty of headroom, the SPL was high, but uh, the sound was not as engaging, nor as refined, nor as uh, open like it was with a dedicated uh, desktop headphone amplifier. 
The mid-range changes slightly depending on the ear pads that you'll be using. For example, with leather ear pads, uh, female vocals are whipping with more emotion. I find them sweeter sounding with leather ear pads. And some of the charm is being lost with these uh, fabric ear pads. At around 1 kHz, these drop some of the energy in that region. So uh, the sound is simply not so powerful, not so emotional in that region. However, these are in any way dry or thin sounding in the mid-range. I still find them better compared to uh, Hyperman Ananda Nano, compared to Edition XS, compared to uh, Moondrop Venus, but these are not really mid-centric headphones like uh, Meze Elite, like Odyssey LCD3, LCD4, like ZMF headphones. Although I believe these are just fine in the mid-range department. The treble region is quite probably the only region that might pose a problem for some of you, but not for all of you. Especially if you use those leather ear pads that um, make the treble a bit sharper, a bit more contoured and a little bit brighter sounding. Uh, you can mitigate that by using these fabric ear pads that remove some of that sharpness and uh, makes it more manageable. But mind you, I'm not talking about a crazy 30 dB spike in the upper treble delivery like it was the case with their FT3 headphones. That is no longer the case with FT7. We have a 6 dB spike at 8 kHz, which is way more manageable. And of course, uh, you can mitigate that by using these fabric ear pads, by using a sweeter sounding DACAM combo like their K17, or by using maybe a tube amplifier that also rolls off some of that energy in that region. If I'm powering these with a brightish sounding headphone amplifier like SMSL SHX, then uh, the treble is becoming uh, quite a problem. But if I'm not doing that, if I'm using the K17 or a tube headphone amplifier, then that is no longer a concern and I can rock out even on loud rock and metal tunes without a problem. Perhaps the biggest improvement compared to uh, many other headphones in this uh, price bracket to seven to eight hundred US dollars is the sheer resolution, inner detail, and transparency of the sound. Just to give you an idea, I find them more resolving sounding compared to a pair of Odyssey LCD3 at two thousand US dollars compared to Sandy Peacock at $1,500 US dollars, compared to Sennheiser HD 800S at $2,000 US dollars, compared to Erzetich Mania at $1,200 euros. So yeah, I believe these are very high performance drivers. They will show you plenty of information, plenty of micro detail information. And uh, these are outperforming, I believe, headphones at around, you know, seven to 800 US dollars. There is more resolution compared to Moondrop Venus and Hyperman Ananda Nano and even Edition XS. So clearly the sound is really transparent and clean. The strongest skills of the FT7 are their open and wide sound and also impressive technicalities. And considering that these cost you $699 and not $2,000, uh, this is the type of company that I would like to invest in and follow. I don't like spending a fortune on the last word in detail retrieval while getting a mediocre build quality. And this is precisely why FT7 already won my appreciation. And the last improvement I hear on the FT7 compared to the FT3 and FT5 uh, is in terms of dynamics. We have a bigger driver right now and of course it physically moves more air compared to a smaller driver and if you have more air per second then automatically means that uh, there is simply more air hitting your eardrums and uh, the sound is just more visceral and more powerful. When you compare a 5-inch woofer with a 6-inch woofer, it becomes readily apparent that you have more sound, uh, stronger bass delivery and just overall nicer dynamics on a bigger driver. And that's exactly what happens on the FT7 compared to FT3 and FT5 headphones. There is just more energy everywhere in the bass, mid-range and treble, not just in the bass. And you can feel that the sound literally moves you and figuratively as well, because these are more fun and lively sounding compared to their past doings. If I disregard the slight sharpness I get with those leather ear pads that could be solved with a sweeter sounding amplifier, then there isn't a musical genre that FT7 won't play nicely with and make you feel great. 
let's briefly look at their measurements uh, that I did with the mini DSP years that is not following any international standards so please don't take them very seriously. Here is the most important measurement where I compared the frequency response of the leather pads with fabric ones and as you can see there is a clear difference at around the upper mid-range region and another one in the upper treble that is much smaller. As you can see distortion is below 1% even at 85 dB SPL. Decay is ultra fast as these are very fast when it comes to transit response. Here is their waterfall that combines frequency response and decay. And here is the spectrogram that shows you zero driver rattle at any frequency region, which is always a pleasant sight. Wrapping up, it seems that Fio is no longer toying around with entry to mid-level headphones and they just proved that they have the know-how and the will to compete with pricier headphones. And I believe the most important parts that a pair of high-end headphones should have are a great build quality with premium materials that will last you at least a decade, a nice comfort level that lets you enjoy music for a couple of hours, an impressive resolution and detail retrieval, a spacious sound that won't make you feel claustrophobic, great dynamics that will impress you with modern tunes, and finally a nice tonal balance that helps you enjoy a wider selection of music. I believe Fio completed five of these quests pretty easily, and there is a little bit of work to do in the tonal balance that 6 dB peak in the upper treble should be addressed in the future. However, these are so much closer to a perfect pair of headphones and let's not forget their accessible uh, $6.99 price that many of you would find so much easier to chew. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed my review. Please consider liking and subscribing if you found this video helpful. That's all for today. I love you all and I'll see you very soon.